Hi guys, welcome to the new episode. I'm finally recording again. Been very busy working, so um, I even prepared the script so that I don't forget what I'm gonna say. We are actually at our secret beach, but now you have seen it, so it's no longer a secret. So, um, yeah, I've been busy working, and you know you can see as proof. You can see my arms like half black and well half like super tan and half like super light because I was working outdoors and uh, Konsu and me we were working hard during the summer it's been very busy which is good for the pocket good for the money but we need a balance so anyway um, first and foremost I would like to thank you for all the subscribers uh, say thank you to you guys who subscribe comments like um, and ask questions. I really love the questions because it builds me and as well as you know uh, gets everyone to learn how to sail which is good. Uh, the more I teach the more I learn. Well, that's what my teacher always said. Um, so keep the questions keep coming. So this episode um, it comes to the very long-awaited episode. I think this was an idea since I did episode 3 I think it was episode 3 I was my my main goal is to build a sale that is cheap not because we are stingy it's because I want to enable more people to sale so we are going to build a sale build a sale which is we're gonna have a step-by-step -step video I hope that it's actually step by step, but it's not step by step to the minute, but it's step by step uh, good enough for you to see what the steps are and how I did it uh, so that it will inspire you how to stitch your own sail uh, so that you can go out sailing um, whether downwind, upwind, or whichever way that you like to try to sail or learn to sail. So, um, as long as my goal is the design is functional it's not perfect in any way it's not like you know one of those commercially built sail by a sail maker which is um, I would say really intricate design and using Dacron uh, material I, I believe that you guys have seen Dacron before Dacron is like a proper sail uh, material it's really nice and stretched and no creases and you know it doesn't, doesn't flex there's no stretch so don't go into that details just build something less than perfect it's easy to build and most importantly the parts are easy to source and see it's actually cheap cheap materials as long as it can last you 10 sails out in moderate wind i would say about 8 to 10 knots at most that is good enough you're not gonna go cup sailing you're not gonna go championship racing or anything so this time we're gonna build a Poundland sale. Poundland is like an equivalent to Dollar Tree in America, um, or anywhere around the world. Say you would say it's actually a, like a not a thrift shop. It's like a it's like a one dollar shop. Anything in the shop is one dollar. So I got one one uh, the sheets that I bought was actually from Poundland. So it's actually one British pound, uh, equivalent to five about five Malaysian ringgit or I don't know convert that yourself you can find British pound on on Google so that you, you can see how much it costs is cheap it's cheap um, I'm talking about base material that is not including your boom well boom you can use um, I think I've mentioned to uh, Elton Elton of uh, Singapore so um, Elton asked me how what material do I use for my for the boom and Yes, uh, the boom can be uh, made of an old fishing rod if it's long enough, if it's thin enough but stiff, not too flexible, or uh, a curtain rail. Curtain rail will be good okay, because it's uh, usually curtain rail comes in about. You can get a, a telescopic one, which you can adjust the the length as well. So that will be really good, great for a boom. Um, but the boom is the one that swings the horizontal one and the mast is the one that's sticking upwards straight the vertical one 
the vertical uh, boom uh, sorry the vertical mast can be made out of aluminum if you have wood you can use wood you can use a fishing rod i would love to use a beach fishing rod because it's carbon it's strong it's slightly flexible not too bendy um, and it's usually a beach rod will be about 12 14 feet long so you can cut the tip off so you get a stiffer section and it's also collapsible it usually comes in like three pieces so three pieces is already pre-made for you the ferrules the joints already pre-made for you is like you can slot in sections convenient really cheap so i think i'm going to post uh the drawings drawings hopefully it's gonna happen this time sorry for the last uh, few snacks i was really busy with work so I'm going to put drawings on the website uh, www.snacksinthebackpack.com Spell it snacks and S-N-A-C-K-S in I-N-T-H-E backpack.com And then maybe you can follow the same design Save the hassle um, We are going to make a 1 meter square 1 square meter sail It's about 1 meter square um, so that you can start sailing so yeah i guess here we go let's go see the video how it's made i start off by getting two sheets of canvas two packs but we're not going to use two we're going to use one now first step is i spread out the tarpaulin on the floor and then i will cut out a strip of the side so that we can get rid of the eyelets we don't really need the eyelets for this part you can retain some if you want then using a scissors i'll just snip that off now it's all cut and clean now we're ready for the next step we're gonna cut the panels in sections going to plan so this is me measuring I'm gonna measure about half so I'm gonna maximize the space that we have on the on the tarpaulin we're gonna split the whole sheet in half so that I can get the maximum area needed to stitch the panels we're gonna go with three panels a small tip conical shape and then middle one and the bottom most it will be the the widest section so we're gonna fold it in half and i'm gonna run the scissors from one end to the other Take your time, you don't rush. You can use a blade if you want, um, but please be careful because tarp is quite soft and you might catch uh, with a blade and you might tear a hole. And using a baton, I bought this baton purposely for this project it only cost me like four pounds i think it acts uh, as a ruler and also as a bending tool we will we will go into that later in further down this video you can see how i do a broad seam a broad seam uh, cut so that the sail will curve and catch the wind so you have the medium sheet cut and then the top sheet cut okay set that aside now the lowest sheet is going to be the the longest sheet of them all ruler on mark with a marker pen 
and then cut. Now we have one, two, three sheets. It's all good. Moving on. I'm gonna use a nail because the floor is wood, you know, flat, so it's easier to work with. Otherwise, you can use other methods that you can find uh, that suits your building space. I'm gonna use a string to mark out the outline of this sail. So I use a measuring tape to measure following the plan. Now we're gonna go down uh, the bottom, the boom side. The longest one is the mast. And then here, as you can see, I can use, I'm using two measuring tapes to match the boom side and the outer line of the sail to match exact point, exactly where it's supposed to land. And then I will put in another nail. So we have three nails there. And then using the same string, if you notice, I didn't cut this, the string. I'll just loop it around the nails and loop it over under to make it hold in place. Now, we're going to arrange all the panels. Start with the biggest. Spread it out. Good. Don't worry about the creases too much. The second panel. And the third, the top one. Okay, looks like it fits into the outline. Now, using my extra long ruler on the pattern, I'm going to line up between the two nails on the outside. There. Using a marker pen, I'm going to mark the outline on the actual sheet. There. That way, we can match all three sheets in, a, in alignment so that when we we are ready to stick and stitch, we can align everything to line to line up properly. Now we're going to start doing the broad seam. I'm going to use a nail. I'm going to measure exactly that section on that line. I'm going to use a calculator. I'm going to mark this section as I'm going to use a 30% broad seam. 30% of the length, mark the point, use a nail, mark the nail on the 30% point of the length, use a button. See, button is flexible. We want to make a curve. I'm going to drop the curve at about one centimeter. You can go deeper, but I would suggest you go a little bit shallower. Try first. If you go too deep, you won't get a good form of the good shape of the sail. So one nail in the middle, one nail in the end. Right there. And then that's going to hold up the whole button on one side. Pull with my left hand. There you get a curve. Then mark the line. Mark the line. All the way to the end. All the way across the line. Now you have a nice curve, smooth curve. With the scissors, I'm going to trim the, the curve so that it will form the base of the broad seam. Trim it up all the way out as far as you can go. Okay, now you can remove the nails, move on to the next panel. Only broad seam the top bit of every panel. So if you have 
uh, you have three panels you only do two broad seams same thing goes here 30 percent mark the nail at 30 percent and one centimeter drop or 10 millimeter drop nails in battens on See, if I nail too close, I can't even bend the, the baton anymore. So I put it a little bit further. There. Then pull. Now, same goes here with the marker pen. Run it across. Now, same goes here. Use the scissors, trim it off so that you have a nice smooth curve for the broad seam. Okay, so how do you match this up? Sometimes when I'm using other materials, I would like to just fold it across, but this time I'm going to cheat. I'm going to use double sided tape. This is just a paper double-sided tape. It's not meant to be waterproof or anything. As long as it can hold until I finish stitching the seam, that will be good enough. So I'm going to peel the backing off, align it, align the markings from earlier. Now stick it just, just enough at the edge of the tape stick it all the way through if I use ripstop I usually fold it like a hem seam so that it will be stronger and it looks neat that's one make sure it's all stretched out nice the bottom panel, same goes here, tapes on, press it right on the edge, okay, trim that off. the backing and then we'll stick like how we did before make sure it's aligned with the outline and also on your markings stick and peel slowly top is very sticky with um, with tape and things like this Uh, double sided tape is really sticky so that's why I peel section by section see that's why I peel and remove the excess now put a nail at the edge the top edge and then hold it like this now you can check your form whether it's forming okay or it needs adjustment if it needs adjustment then you can still roll back and do it again Now I fast forwarded this video by 10 times and I'm using a machine so I'm gonna stitch the whole seam I use a single zigzag seam for this for this uh, job Notice that I've rolled the seal, the excess of the seal in a row so that it goes through the machine easier. Otherwise you have a whole clutter of tarp flowing through the machine and you might stitch your own finger if you're not careful. Roll it up, roll it up and go on to the next longer seam. 
this process can be applied to any size of a sale um, big or small um, you can use the same method to stitch with different materials but the process is pretty much the same and of course it will cost you more because you're going to use bigger larger materials Now we are doing the the mask sleeve. I call it a mask sleeve. It's easier for you to understand. So I'm marking exactly where it's having pre, enough free play for the mask, for the sail to flip and turn, but not catch, not too tight, not too loose, not too tight. Note of the measurements. So you can adjust the sleeve as much as you want based on what mask you're gonna use. Mark every other distance so that you can check. And then use a button, it's a ruler. And draw the line. Using the scissors, trim off the excess. This sleeve can be from made from any materials. Basically, I'm I'm actually using an excess. Um, I think it was like a curtain blind. It's flexible. It's waterproof. It's quite durable. So you can fold it in half. It's good shape. Um, so you can use whatever you have. You can even have. Uh, you can use jeans material like denim um, if you want. Now I'm gonna mark and cut off the excess where the lines were already drawn from earlier. Trim off the excess so that we can. Put on the sleeve. Make sure that's a line and make sure you draw a line. I usually leave about 10 millimeters of room then on the outer side of the sail, on the line, I'm going to stick double-sided tape so that it's easier for us to fold it over to stitch the ends to finish off. Run the tape all the way down, the whole length. Make sure this edge is straight. for this basic sail. Now, we're going to trim on the outside of that tape. Now, I'm going to peel the backing, sections at a time, and fold it over, stick it on itself so that it's, it won't fray when the sail laughs in the wind.
Okay, that's all good. Press it nice and neat. I'm going to fold the sleeve in half and press it. So I'm going to tape the mask sleeve side all the way down. Trim the excess. And tape on the other side as well. So you have two sides for the sleeve. Peel the backing on one side at a time. Stick it all the way down. Nice and neat. And peel the other side as well and stick it over. Just at the edge of the tape. Now, same goes here, you're going to stitch the whole length. I use a zigzag pattern all along the length of the sleeve. Also, when you put this, um, you put on some double-sided tape, it gives extra strength and rigidity to the to the stitching. I fold the end and finish off the edge. Now I'm going to run down on the outer side of the sail. Same goes here, all the way down. This is just a straight stitch. I don't want any wind resistance on the outside, so I'm going to just run a straight stitch, not a zigzag. Gonna run two lines extra strong for this bit. Now I'm gonna stitch the boom side. Same goes here, but this time I'm not gonna bother to put tape so I'm just gonna run all the way down just by the markings And finish the end and that's it trim the excess and we are ready to go to the beach this is Tom's kayak is our sailing buddy um, so I've rigged this sail on his kayak just to show how he look like because he wanted one so I got him one use three three rigs on the front left and right mount And there he goes. He haven't sailed before, so he needs to learn how to how to navigate and how to angle the uh, the sail. So sails ready. All you have to do is watch more sail videos and learn how to properly sail. If your kayak is not sailing properly or it's not sailing upwind or it's drifting sideways add on a dagger board or a lee board watch our episode on lee board and you understand how to make one and 
you can mount one on your craft and off you go. Good luck.